Cool. Standing here with a uh, new light signing, Marius Lowe and CBC Sanguini. First of all, Marius, welcome to Joburg. Uh, very quickly, how's it been? How's the reception been? And are you ready to get going? No, I'm flipping excited. Uh, you know, it was always a little bit daunting coming to Joburg, big city. You know, I'm a small boy, a small town boy from Bloemfontein. So, um, yeah, Flip, uh, really enjoyed Joburg so far, settling in nicely. I mean, the guys have been so welcoming and, you know, everyone here and I've been enjoying it. Traffic hasn't been too much. Uh, so that was the biggest thing. But no, uh, been enjoying Joburg and the Lions has uh, really been an eye opener and, and I've enjoyed it. Uh, can you just give us some insights to, to what sort of made you choose the Lions? What made you make, want to make the move? What was the thinking behind it? I think a uh, big part for me was, you know, the, the Lions and coach uh, Cash, you know, they, they really uh, wanted uh, someone like me and, and for me uh, uh, to be here. So, you know, someone that really wants you, I think it's always a, it's a big compliment. So, um, yeah, a good opportunity uh, for me to come this side and, and I yeah, didn't doubt uh, or have any, had any doubts to grab it with both hands. And obviously a big, big gap in the midfield for the Lions is the loss of both Bergu and, uh, and, and Simonone. So some big shoes to fill there. Um, what do you think that you can bring to the table? Yeah, I definitely think uh, there's big shoes to fill. Uh, they were a really good combination. Um, uh, you know, we, we're all different players and I think we all have our own strengths and, and work on. So, uh, yeah, I think I can bring a little bit more uh, physicality to, uh, to, the, to the midfield and um, yeah I think calmness uh, is one of my strengths so if we can bring that to the rest of the guys around me uh, I think then we'll go a long way. And Spruce, somebody speaking of fitting people's shoes, obviously the loss of Vincent Tuca, a big one to the loose trio. Um, you're also now entering, you're becoming one of the more senior players in that loose trio. How important is it for you to sort of step up this, this season and try to sort of fill that void? Yeah, like you say, definitely uh, losing Vince was a big loss and uh, he's a great player. But um, uh, coming to the season and getting the opportunity and hopefully getting more exposure to play, I'm going to have to be on my A game every time. And, and um, I think I've been doing that my, in the last season and the, towards the end when I was getting my chances. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to be challenging, you know, and uh, to try to find the different combinations. But the guys have really been uh, really showcasing their talent uh, during preseason. And, uh, and I'm very confident about uh, what kind of uh, combinations they're gonna, the coaches are going to pick. And uh, if I'm going to be there, if other guys are going to be there, I'm just looking forward to whoever's going to put the jersey. I know they're going to do the job. Now, speaking as a Lions fan, we were a little bit worried about some of the start of the season and, and stuff, but then really started kicking towards the, the end of the season. And I think showed that maybe despite not having the, the big sort of spring mod names and sort of a much younger squad, that they can still compete. What do you think makes it so special about the Lions that even despite often going into games as underdogs, that they can still find results and continue to make Ayers Park such a, a difficult place to come and play? I think what makes it very uh, special is that the, the uh, what can I say, is that for the team to be able to pull together and through the tough times because we actually, like I say, we had a very tough uh, start to the season and uh, we found our feet again as a team and we were able to pull together despite like, we just kind of closed off the external noises and we were able to just sit together as a team and find what works for the team and try to move forward and try to just capitalize on that and keep on, on uh, building on that just like how we did and, oh, and we're able to finish on a positive note, you know. And the line sort of being a bit of a production line for young talent coming through. Um, what sort of environment is that as a young player coming into a at a union where you know you're going to get an opportunity, you know that if you continue to perform, you're going to be able to, to rise to the ranks quite quickly. How much of confidence is that um, to any youngsters coming through knowing that they, they will get the opportunity and, and they will have a chance to show what they can do? No, it's definitely a, a confident booster because you always know that you are going to get an opportunity here, but it also then flips it on the other side and puts it the responsibility on yourself to always be professional and keep yourself ready and also be in the States to be able to perform in the in the professional setup because it's not because it's no longer just junior setup that you get chucked in. You actually get put in, in the deep end and you but you only feel it like you're in the deep end if you feel under prepped and you feel like you have not been responsible enough as a player to actually be professional. And then Morris probably playing with the likes of Jordan Hendricks, uh, Henkel and Veg, very young players, but obviously very exciting talents. Um, what's it like for you to sort of come as someone who's probably got a bit more experience and, and be a bit of a calm head between, between some of those youngsters? Um, and what's it been like training with them and playing with them so far? No, I think uh, a very talented guys, group of guys, you know, all around the back line forwards. Um, yeah, it's been a really good experience training with them. It's something different. Um, yeah, it's refreshing. Um, I've, I've also learned a lot from them. Um, and yeah, I, I just think it's a good combination. Uh, no, like you know, like we said, 
doesn't matter which guy wears the jersey on the day. I think we all are capable of, you know, um, putting in a dominant performance. Now, someone who's come to Ayers Park and played there as uh, on the opposition, what makes it such a tough place to come play? And, and how, how excited are you now to, to have that sort of advantage um, on your side this time? Yeah, I think it's an easy answer, you know, the altitude. It's, uh, have it's, you adapted yet? <laughs> I have. Finally. Um, so, no, I, and I think it's something you can use as a strength. And, you know, um, you know it's always tough playing the Lions at Ellis Park. You know, you, you, you feel it. Um, uh, and not, not just in terms of, of the altitude, but, you know, the tempo that they play while well, we play. Um, so, yeah, I'm just excited to be able to have that advantage on my side. And Spoo, uh, in terms of aspirations the coming season, obviously a new competition, the likes of Challenge Cup, still having the, to balance the Curry Cup. We saw the Lions struggling a little bit in the, in the Curry Cup. Um, maybe that sort of having a very youthful um, side, almost sort of not really backfiring, but we saw where it becomes quite a big challenge for the Union. What are the, what are realistic expectations for the Union? Where are you guys trying to go this season? And, and what's sort of the main goal um, as you sort of continue to grow as a team? No, like you say, uh, the main goal is always to try to grow as a team create the cohesion and the synergy in the team to keep it growing because we're a very young uh, bunch of uh, uh, boys, uh, men actually, and we're trying to just uh, keep on building them together and keeping them together. And one of our, say, a big goal is to be in the top eight, hopefully in the URC, to try to finish in the top eight, you know, and we're working hard towards that. And that's uh, really, we want to not just take part, we actually want to start competing and dominating in the URC and teams to actually start fearing us and seeing us as threats, not just seeing us as just an opposition to take points on, you know. And yeah, that's what we really want to be doing this season, you know, to actually be a threat to other teams and actually be causing problems in the US. And it may have more to the fans. Uh, we want to start seeing bigger crowds at Ellis. Um, what, what do you think uh, when the fans come to Ellis? What, what sort of, I mean, what, we, the Lions have always been a team that plays very nice, attacking sort of rugby. So it to the fans, what, what can you say to, to encourage them to try and get back at the stadium and try filling out those seats? Uh, just a message to the fans would be just to keep the belief on us. I know we had a bad start last season because uh, a lot of things were happening, especially external things were happening. But this season, uh, I think uh, the boys are really uh, prepped uh, very, very well for the past 11 weeks of preseason of bad. And, uh, you know, just keep the belief on the boys. And uh, the boys have really pulled in together and we're going to keep the brand of uh, rugby that we're playing, the high tempo and try scoring rugby. And we're always going to just, you know, play with the pride and passion of the Emirates Airlines Park. Perfect. Well, there we go. Thanks for that, Chefs, for, for the season. And as you heard it here first, Spurs saying that the Lions are going top eight. And we'll hold you to that at the end of the season. Thanks.